My name is Kevin Schuster. Uh, this is my show, Portraits of Women, uh, here at K-Space Contemporary. Uh, this is a compilation of probably 10 years of work uh, and narrowed down to portraits of women and their personal personalities that I've taken. I was born in Brownsville, Texas. I uh, my parents moved me across the country, uh, lived in a little town in Plainview, Texas, uh, moved back here and have been in Corpus Christi for several years. I can't remember off the top of my head. I also lived in New York State, Pennsylvania for a very short time uh, back in the 80s. Um, basically, my parents uh, moved down here and I stayed down here. I always loved the beach and it was near the water and I grew up uh, surfing, windsurfing, and so I stayed here and I enjoy it here. I got into ph photography um, at an early age when my brother loaned me his camera when our family went on vacation. And soon after that, uh, well, a few years after that, I saved up and bought my own camera. So I've been taking photos uh, since I was probably 10 years old. Uh, when I was younger, we had a brownie, Kodak brownie camera in my toy box. No film, but I would run around the house and take imaginary pictures with that brownie camera. Uh, years later, I, uh, I've always been interested in cameras and capturing single moments and things that interested me and things that might interest other people. I started creating bodies of work when I was in theater and performing on stage in musicals and ballet, and I was fortunate enough to be able to take my camera backstage and take photos uh, backstage of live performances. Uh, it was quite exciting because I would perform, I'd run off stage, I'd grab the camera, I'd take pictures, and then I'd go back on stage and perform. So I was quite busy at those times. And that is probably the beginning of my bodies of work were uh, theater and dance. I still to this day continue to photograph dance. I photograph for the uh, Bailando Dance Festival. Some of the uh, portraits of women include dancers that I know. Um, and then from there, I'm always, as with every artist, we're always trying to improve ourselves. And, and learn along the journey and, and create and create new works and new things. From there, uh, uh, part of the body of work includes uh, portraits of women that are just sh showcase their personality. It's not meant to make any kind of statement or anything, but when you work with a person and you get to know them and uh, they become comfortable, then they, they allow you to uh, show expressions of themselves, which I'm fortunate enough to be able to capture. And then the uh, third body of work in the show um, is underwater. I learned uh, <clears throat> from a child, my, um, not a child, a teenager, my brother-in-law uh, loaned me his Nikonis underwater camera and I was always fascinated with underwater and taking underwater pictures and it was just a whole new world it was it was ethereal it was not your typical portrait or landscape but it became something more of of imaginary images and in my underwater, I, I 
look up to and have known some very fine underwater photographers, but they, they do these fabulous photos with uh, women in gowns and, and head pieces underwater, and they're fabulous, and they're full-size portraits of these women. I started out uh, trying to do that, and uh, I didn't have a very high-end camera in case. So that led to me creating a different image. And in these images, there are mainly just snippets of a person. And the, but the reflections, the reflections speak so much and uh, remind me, and I've also been told, that they look more like paintings than photographs. And that's an enjoyable uh, compliment. Uh, most rewarding things about it is that when, a, when we are through doing a shoot underwater, I always ask, how is your experience? How did it make you feel? And I never had a negative comment. Everybody enjoys it. And they always talk about it. In uh, the past couple years, I just began to do uh, headshots of women. I mentioned I uh, was able to photograph backstage during performances. This particular shot was as we were striking the set, and uh, I basically it was after the ballet was over, but I was striking the set and saw the stage crew cleaning up and the dancer carrying her costumes off stage back to her dressing room. And it was just an image that I've always wanted to create and shows the, what, what happens besides a, a fantastic performance, but the work that goes in behind it. This particular photo was shot uh, a couple years ago during a live performance. And a lot of my photos are shot during live performances. They're not staged by photos of dancers. Uh, that's where I have a very large body of work uh, during performances and dancers. Um, I shoot single shots. Uh, I know with the technology of the day, and I've thought about it, you can do a video and choose frames. Um, and you can also hear people that uh, shoot continuous mode and you hear their camera going off. During performances, you really can't do that. So what I do is I shoot single shots. Each one of these dancers is a single shot during a performance. I want to talk about my underwater photography next. Um, this particular piece was a friend of mine. Uh, she's a, a pinup model. And uh, there was a question I was asked is whether I plan, I plan these images and not really. Um, this particular one, she brought her pinup costumes or outfits and uh, I do there are certain things that I do when I do underwater one is selecting the outfit because what is going to work what is going to work in an underwater photo so this one of course the red dress it's striking and I like to do something a little different. It's not just, like I said, photographing a portrait. So we had her put on her high heel shoes. I had a old 50s sweeper that I bought at a garage sale. And okay, well, here's a 50s image, kind of like 50s pinup. 
50s image where uh, the women would be dressed in dresses and they would be doing housework. They would be cooking. They would be whatnot. So we used a sweeper and her dressed up outfit and uh, created this image underwater. Well, to me, what makes the image is not only that, but the reflection that you can see all of her in the whole photo as a reflection. And then the water particles. Well, when you shoot underwater, if the sun is set facing a certain way, the water particles reflect. Well, this worked great in this image because she's sweeping up dust. And so this has come to be a, an iconic photo um, and really like it. The next one to it was shot uh, during a photo shoot for a bridal magazine. They asked me to shoot their bride and her gown underwater. And so uh, we did this photo shoot, which is on the cover of a bride, bridal magazine. But this is one of the outtakes from the photo. And this is uh, uh, representative of the later of my underwater works. <clears throat> the image <clears throat> is mainly all reflection. And you can look and see certain little things in the reflection that give away what it is. But I also like to include a bit of the person or a bit of their outfit so that you have a glimpse. It's not, not just a reflection. It's like this is a reflection of her. It makes the image a little more personal. Um, so that's what I try to do in these, in these portraits is create something that's personal. This was one of the underwater photos. Um, it's hard to plan underwater uh, and you work you work with the person and try to create uh, some sort of image, some sort of reflection. Um, and, and I can't remember what emotion I told her to try to create. And it reminded me so much of Michelangelo's cr The Creation of Adam. Of course, this is a woman, but the image still, uh, still reflects that, <laughs> pardon the pun. Uh, this image is called Discovery, and whereas she is discovering herself uh, within her reflection. This photo was shot in Dallas, a model up there that I was working with. Uh, she was actually just sitting resting from doing some shoots, and, and I saw this image. It doesn't show her face or anything, but it, re it shows her um, relaxed and, and just the expression in her hands and her, and her body language it reflects a part of her, of who she is. This one is entitled Ophelia for obvious reasons. It's a very recognizable image. Uh, we didn't set out planning to do that but we were, had set up for a series of photos and um, it had just rained, it was July, and we just had a downpour and we decided to go with it. So we went out to this field in, uh, in Fulton, Texas and uh, she laid down in a puddle of water. <laughs> it was actually a flooded field but she laid down in it and uh, we took the photos. Uh, this has some uh, vegetation, which is typical for South Texas, in and around and in the Rockport, uh, Fulton area. So it has a little bit of our South Texas taste and yet it still reflects the image of Ophelia. It was lots of fun and, and she enjoyed it. This one is entitled Netted Evening. Um, once again, it's not a portrait of a woman's face or necessarily the body, but this, this um, image attracted me to take because the, um, 
patterns. The netted hose, the uh, diamond headboard, and uh, just reflected. You can, if you look closely, you can see she has a pleasant, almost a smiling look on what you can see of her face. So it's not meant to say anything. It's just an image to make someone possibly, okay, feel the situation. Um, but uh, that's, this one is entitled Nettled Ex Escape. This was an image where a group of friends got together at their house out in the country and we just spent the whole day photographing and coming up with whatever we could. And we grabbed what was laying around, what was laying around the farmhouse. And uh, she wanted the barbed wire. Said, we'll do it, okay. Uh, nettled uh, is like the thorny nettles as in the barbed wire. And that's why we came up with nettled, nettled escape. And her tension is trying to escape the nettles. Uh, this one is shot in, uh, in infrared. This one is entitled Breaking Expressionism. When I shoot uh, underwater photos, it's not all just underwater. We sometimes uh, create images out of the water as well. Uh, this one is shot above the water. Um, this one is also an infrared photo. Uh, it Expressionism uh, tends to be <clears throat> evident in a lot of the underwater and the shots that I do with water because one, the expression on her face, but the the texture of the water uh, in the image comes out to be that way. And this one breaking, she's breaking through the surface of the water. So entitled Breaking Expressionism. This one entitled Hidden in Ice Leaves uh, was a merited image in actually several photo photography competitions and also a uh, prize winner in one of the gallery shows. Uh, this one is also infrared. Um, the leaves that you see are actually very bright green. But when you take off the infrared filter uh, in the camera or in the case of a uh, film camera when you put on an infrared filter on the lens the light reflects off the green and creates this white high key look. This one was shot also during an under, underwater session and uh, we uh, did the underwater shoot and I asked her let's do some let's do some fun shots around the pool. And so I had her hide in the foliage and took this photo. Notice how she still stands out as hidden as she is. It's one of my favorites. These are entitled Heartstrings and Ivy Wedding Dress. Um, continuing on with talking about infrared photography, uh, this one is an infrared photograph. This one is not. Um, these were shot uh, several years ago. White here, which almost looks like a wedding dress, is actually a reflection of ivy growing on the side of the building. Um, one of the things that really got me interested in art photography was uh, my interest in experimental photography, uh, which started in the 90s. Did several processes similar to gum bichromate. It just got me interested in creating something different than rather than just a portrait or just a black and white photograph. This, this is a continuation. This is once again like with the underwater, 
you're focused more on the reflection and the image and the mood of what's going on in the photographs. It's not just a straight portrait. Uh, these were actually done before I started doing underwater. underwater. So you can see my interest in the, maybe you want to call it surreal, uh, you know, impressions, not just capturing an image, but being able to show something that you can look at and ponder and contemplate over. Um, I've also set up in the gallery at K-Space uh, a booth similar to how these are created. And if you come down to K-Space, you can get in the selfie booth and uh, create your own images. But once again, this is, this is uh, uh, my journey into experimental photography and part of what uh, part of what drives my images, I would say. This last group of photos is probably the latest in my work. Uh, it's mainly headshots, but once again, it's about the personality of the person in the image. Uh, the first one right here is called Reed. Uh, this was at the beginning of the pandemic and uh, we were all doing what we could at home. And this was actually shot right before the pandemic. And this is the image that uh, won me the show in the gallery at K-Space. It was selected by the jurors as best of show. The rest of the images, once again, are headshots. Uh, Dia de los Muertos. Uh, Fuchsia, uh, wonderful uh, friend of mine that I know does wonderful flower arrangements and she agreed to, she wanted me to photograph some of her uh, work and this was just too beautiful not to, to show. The next three are series that we call Earth, Wind and Fire and these were shot uh, in the Ritz Theater uh, with a lot of help, uh, but uh, this is wind, this is earth, and this is fire. And the last one is a very good friend of mine that loves donuts. We decided to uh, do something a little different and add a little personality to what uh, what her personality is. <laughs> well, I can't add to her personality, but it, it, it expresses a lot of who she is and what she loves. Welcome to the fun room. <laughs> Some call it the fun house. We were talking about experimental photography and this is a selfie booth set up at K-Space Contemporary where you can come in and play with this as a background, as create your own uh, experimental images like the other two I sh showed earlier, and uh, be with Marilyn. <laughs> and in conclusion, a little bit about my educational background. Uh, I graduated from Texas A&M University with a Bachelor of Music degree, uh, uh, emphasis in voice. Uh, I. Uh, have been in musical theater. I was once a member of uh, a ballet company, so I was a dancer and also an actor. So I was a triple th threat in the theater and hence a lot of my experience and a lot of uh, why I still enjoy photographing live performances and dance. Um, at one point I was accepted to Parsons Design School in New York City. Um, and under, under scholarship, um, I did not go. I admitted under sculpture uh, and they really liked my photography. And they wanted me for the photographs I was doing at the time. 
and this was early in my college years. So my education really is life, life experiences and learning. I think one of the greatest uh, tools an artist has is experience. Life experiences, the opportunities, the, um, the thirst for knowledge, the thirst for growing is, is really the greatest tool in an artist's toolbox. You can learn all the other stuff, you can go to school for it, but when you have experiences, um, you have more things going on in your head. Uh, I was asked, do I plan these photos? Uh, most of them, no. Uh, when I shoot uh, dancers on stage, I don't necessarily knew, know what they're gonna do next, but be because of my experience in dance, I can anticipate what's going to happen and I can capture the image. Um, my experience in the coast and being near the water and being underwater gives me the experience to, to uh, attack the challenge of doing underwater. Uh, my experience in knowing people and talking to people um, brings out the personality. Thank you for this opportunity for the show and uh, thank you for this interview. Uh, I hope you can <laughs> listen through it um, and go out, have some experiences and take some photographs.